Enid Maxwell was born in 1912 in Barbados and lived most of her life in Tent Bay in the rural parish of St. Joseph. She grew up in an era where widespread poverty meant that many citizens did not have disposable income to purchase their food and instead produced much of their own food out of dire necessity. People reared animals for the dinner table, bread fruit were there for the taking, and a variety of vegetables and fruits grew easily in the fertile soil. Additionally, Tent Bay, a well-known fishing community, also provided a plentiful bounty from the sea. Accustomed to fresh, healthy and nutritious food, Enid Maxwell devoted her life to promoting that Barbadians should eat more of what they grow and produce more of what they eat. She led by example through the creation of foods that embodied the distinctive Bajan flavors that she thought were not truly appreciated, and by teaching others to do the same. For this, she's credited with playing a significant role in the evolution of Barbados's culinary culture. A home economics management teacher by profession, Ms. Maxwell went on to become an inspector of nutrition with the Ministry of Education and assisted with the establishment of the Housecraft Centre before becoming its principal. In an interview with the Barbados Advocate in 1984, Ms. Maxwell explained that the Housecraft Centre's emphasis was not on the use of imported food stuff or foreign recipes, but on making the most of what was available locally. The students were encouraged to bring to the classes what food stuff they had at home, in their backyards, or what was caught in the sea. It speaks success for all of the hard work that you put into into winning that award. But can you imagine winning that award along with the Governor General's Award of Excellence three times? Being an award winner myself, I am excited to be standing next to someone who did that. He is Ezra Beckles, a chef since 1979, and he has been reaping the sweets. And today we're going to focus on the sweet that he's going to create. Ezra, welcome. Thank and congratulations you. on your in in Maxwell Award and the Governor General's Award. That's sweet. Thank anyway, you. So today, I understand you're going to be doing a pumpkin cake with fresh gooseberry uh, compote. Is that right? Yes, So yes. can we jump right into this and tell us what's, what's going on with you going into this, um, making this cake? So the pumpkin, I do not, what I do is scrub the pumpkin, make sure the pumpkin is scrubbed first, and I do not take the skin off. So what I do, I just take the pumpkin. We're going to grate the pumpkin, so with the skin and everything. So they grate the pumpkin. Okay, so we go, any side is good or you do? Any, you any, the bigger side, the better. The bigger side, the better. So. This is the coarser side. Mm -hmm, the coarser side. This, this grate is sharp. So along with grating the pumpkin, then you can tell us some of the ing ingredients that we have? Well, the ingredients are brown sugar, mm -hmm. flour, mm -hmm. cinnamon, mm -hmm. nutmeg. We're going to add two eggs in tight and three ounces of vegetable oil. Right. So this is the amount of pumpkin you want. So you can add it into the bowl. All right. And then you add all of the, the other ingredients as well. And mm. So as we have the pumpkin, so what are we going to put in now? You got um, the sugar. Right, the sugar. How much, how much the sugar would be, should be? The sugar should be at least no more than about Eight, seven, eight ounces of sugar. Seven, eight ounces of sugar. Next, we're gonna add the. So this is. This is nutmeg. Nutmeg, so a teaspoon of nutmeg. Yes, please, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Cinnamon, the spices. All right. So we'll just add a pinch of salt. So what are gonna take the spoon? You're gonna mix and this. Mix it up together. So we have to let the sugar. Um, Dissolve or no, it doesn't have to. See the brown sugar head break down the water in the pumpkin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, and from there then we we're gonna add what? From here, we're gonna add um, about an ounce of water. 
It smells good, Ezra. Yeah. It smells good and smell the spices coming up at me. All right. And then so this is the... I can add about four ounces of flour. And we just... If you fold it in or you just stir it in? I'm just stirring it in. Stirring it in, like stirring it in. All right. All right, so. So is that, I'm gonna add the baking powder. Teaspoon of baking powder. It's looking good. So, let's see your mix. So, the last thing I'm gonna add in is the two eggs. Two eggs, only two eggs, all right. So in goes the eggs and we mix it. So these eggs, so we hold it together. Yeah, the eggs look, yeah. And keep it, all right. Do, can we put in anything else in it, like nuts or, or people? If, if you want to, you can add nuts into it. Mm -hmm. um, um, sometimes if you want to, you can use uh, less sugar. You want a, a, a different sweetener, you can you can add banana to the pumpkin. Okay, nice. So this is your mixture mm -hmm. finished. All right. And then we put it into the pan, so that's we it. So take this okay. and add this into the ramekins. Mm -hmm. Nice. So this is a this is a very small cake here that we get in this one here. Uh, as opposed to, can you put it into a big a you big can, baking pan? You can put it into a big loaf and pan. Okay, all right. So people who want to eat small portions, this would be good for them. Then it's supposed to eat enough the whole bread. Yes, please. Yes. All right. So we're finished. Mm -hmm. We're gonna send these to the oven. Mm -hmm. When we, when they finish big, then we're gonna set up the finished product. So Ezra, we have, we have the pumpkin cake in the oven, so let's now start with the fresh gooseberry compote. So let's see how we go from here. So what, what I'm going to do is to just add the fresh gooseberries into the sauce, and some yeah. of them. Yeah, and one of the things that Enid, Enid Maxwell always um, advocate for is using um, local fresh fruit in, in our foods and so on. And so we encourage people to use the fresh fruit. Um, the fresh fruits is good once you can get the fresh fruits. And right now there's a lot of fresh fruits you All can right. get around here in the island. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. water. Right, so that, that steam up. All right. Then I'm gonna add some wine. So some lovely wine. Mm -hmm. The so this is granulated sugar here? Yeah, right, okay. about two tablespoons of granulated sugar. So why granulated as opposed to the baking sugar? Or because we have it already? Um, because I have vanilla uh -oh. sugar here. Okay. I make my own vanilla sugar. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to use the actual vanilla essence. So I add the vanilla sugar to that once okay. I start. Thing. And then you have some other? So I'm going to add a pinch, a pinch of, of nutmeg and also a pinch of cinnamon. And so when do you add the... the once that starts to boil, then they're going to add the vanilla sugar to mm -hmm. it. Okay. The that, way that is doing, what they can do is to take some of the gooseberries. Mm -hmm. And you're going to chop right. it up. I can just take them off the seed. And when we're small, I used to love gooseberries. Eh? All right, so well, we advocate can, for using local food. You can, you can, you can make, you can make a um, gooseberry pulp the same way that you take the um, actual sour sauce and make the pulp with it. You can do the same thing with the gooseberries once you have um, gooseberries. For me, year all around you get gooseberries, so I try to use up the gooseberries as much as possible. So mm -hmm. once mango is plentiful and um, gooseberries is plentiful, sour sauce is plentiful, what I do is just take them and I just take, skin them and put them in the freezer till they're ready to use them. All right, so, so we're gonna add this now so to the pot? I'm gonna add this to the pot. Okay. Once that is reduced, that's your gooseberry. So we have to let that cool and then, yeah. all Once right. Once that cool, we're gonna come back and we're gonna set the dish up. So Ezra, this is the finished product. Your pumpkin cake with fresh gooseberry compost. 
Are you ready to dig in? So I, what I can do is to add some the, I'm gonna add the gooseberries. Mm -hmm. On top. Oh wow. Then again. So what I'm gonna do, this, I'm gonna add that flour. Mm. Presentation is always important. You agree with me? Yes. Yeah, All sure. right. Mm. This should be nice. Mm. This is awesome, Ezra. Mm. So if you want a Bajan sweet fried Ezra pumpkin cake with fresh gooseberry compote. Cheers. Mm. Maxwell's outstanding civic contribution also includes her influential role in the pilot phase of the school meal service in 1964. Her greatest legacy is the legendary Atlantis Hotel on the East Coast, and in particular, its Sunday lunch buffet, which continues to attract local, international, and even distinguished patrons, including Prince Charles, not only because of its wide variety of typical local foods, but also because of the hotels and equaled creative use of local produce. Enid Maxwell is remembered as a kind-hearted lady with a tenacious spirit who, among her many accolades, was awarded the Gold Crown of Merit for her long-standing public service. Additionally, the National Cultural Foundation's most prestigious award offered in culinary arts at the annual National Independence Festival of Creative Arts bears her name the Enid Maxwell Award of Excellence. And even now, more than a century after her birth, Enid Maxwell is still fondly remembered for her unfailing commitment to the promotion of local food through her catchphrase, eat what you grow and grow what you eat. Yes, if I be 